Morning chaps, welcome along. Wednesday, today, stout brew day. The mash looked awesome, didn't it? It looked fantastic with all the different colours and browns and the smell. Ooh, if you had smelly vision, you'd know exactly what I mean. It's fantastic. So what I'm doing at the moment is just running off into the boil kettle, sparging, essentially. A uh, bit of time to wait for this to finish off. So I need to busy myself with another job. So I've decided to make a start on the framework for the cold room. Now last night I kind of uh, set about thinking how exactly are we going to achieve this cold room situation. So what I'd like to do is build it in sections that can fit one or two pallets side by side, one or two euro pallets in side by side. And uh, then build another section next to that, which will fit another two pallets in, and compartmentalize it. So each one of these compartments has its own cooling fan inside, all running off the same unit, but fed individually. So if I'm not carrying 10 pallets worth of stock, for instance, I don't need to cool the whole cold room. I can cool them at different rates as well. If I want to sit one at four degrees and one at 10 degrees, I'm able to do that with uh, individual control for them all. So the plan is to sit them along this back wall where you can see we've got the timber and steel storage. So all this timber rack here now is uh, finished with. We need this space, so I'm gonna have to strip it all out, move it all to the top of the unit and uh, start the edge wall there, that's where the edge frame is going to live. Sort of coming out where the timber rack is at the moment. And then we're going to have to move the steel rack, again that's going to have to come off the wall for the time being, but it will go back on just higher up. So the whole area, the whole refrigerated area is only going to be just tall enough for me to get in sort of six foot high, 1800 internal height. Then we'll have some floor beams if you like, maybe some uh, four by twos laid on end. So put another four inch on that. Then we'll line the top with three quarter inch ply, I think. So we'll have a mezzanine up there to store things. A little bit like what we've got there, but I don't really store anything up there. That will change though. It's just figuring out what I'm going to store up there. But here, we're going to have all that space up the top for empty casks. That's where I'd like those to go. So we'll just get all the empties after they've been washed. Just chuck them all up here. All those boggart hole casks that we bought, because they're not going to be in circulation for this first half of the year, I wouldn't imagine. So they can go up there as well out of storage. So if we sort of have one, two, three, maybe even four compartments of uh, refrigeration, that should give me enough to store eight pallets with 18 casks on each pallet, and then maybe another one on the end to store the hops, which sits at a slightly colder temperature, maybe even slightly better insulated. So I toyed with the idea, do I make this out of steel or timber? You know, what's the easiest, most economical way for me to do it? And I've decided to punt with timber. So I'm going to make a timber frame, almost like a stud wall, in between each of the refrigerated compartments. And then we'll dress those out, almost like bedrooms in a, you know, in a new build, if you like, with the stud partitions running all the way along the back and down the sides. That will then allow me to put one inch extra therm installation or king span, whatever you want to call it, on the inside where the stud wall is, then fill the stud wall with loft insulation, which is considerably cheaper, and then on the back, well, when it's against the wall, it won't need anything, but in between, the other side will just have a stud wall on it, another sheet, sorry, another sheet of extra therm or king span insulation and the very end one, well that can just be a plywood 
and I can use the wall space to hang things on or whatever, put shelving up, whatever I need to do. So that, I think, will give us enough insulation to keep the beer cold. Same with the roof as well. Extra therm insulation on the roof, layer of insulation, plywood sheeting on the top. And also, because it's made out of timber, it's going to be light. It's going to be easy to just screw together. I don't have to mess about welding it. And I think it's going to be considerably cheaper than buying the steel. So uh, that's the way we're going to go. I'm not going to be using a fork truck in here anytime soon. So it's not like it's going to have to hold three or four tons of weight up there. It's just going to have empty casks and maybe a bit of grain. But chances of the grain going up there at the moment are slim. And even if I build it properly, it should still be good enough for a ton or two. I'm going to confirm with building wrecks. Yeah, you know, we're not going to do it half ass, we're going to do it proper. It's going to be a substantial construction built to a budget, but that will do the freaking job, you know. So, first thing I've got to do today then, after I've stopped waffling and explaining what the crack is, is move all this timber here. Yeah, and there's a lot of timber there. It's gone! So I've taken the wood stack down, stacked the timber over there, made a bit of a mistake on the boil while I'm taking all this down. I actually uh, over sparged slightly. So I've had to boil for an extra 30 minutes to get the concentration back to what I wanted. Listen to that bad boy. Let's check this out a minute. So we've got beer pouring out the side of the boil kettle at the moment. Because I over I had too much volume. Because I had too much volume, I couldn't boil it down without it boiling over. So I just threw caution to the wind and I let it boil over. So we lost a little bit of efficiency today. We lost a little bit of beer to the floor. If you look at the floor there, you'll see it. And uh, that was me just uh, purging the air out of the plate chiller which caused it to jump out the top of the kettle. It is all under control, although it might not look like it is. So we've got another 15 minutes to uh, half an hour on the boil. Yeah, 27 minutes actually. Uh, then we should be ready to add... No. <laughs> Let's get it straight, lad. 20 minutes before I add the protoflock and 30 minutes in total before I transfer and then hopefully we should hit our numbers. This time, the stout, I'm reducing the ABV anyway, so it's gonna be what it's gonna be. I'm gonna to have to make a new pump clip for it, so if it comes out at 4.8 or 
that's what I will declare. Doesn't make much difference to me on this one because I'm not brewing uh, exactly to the ABV that I want. I just need to bring it down. Ended up at 5.6 last time. Way too high, way too high. Bloody good stout though. So this time round, bit thinner. Bit of a cock up, let's be honest. Bit of a cock up. But these things are sent to test us and uh, because I'm brewing for us and for the brew shed, it doesn't really matter all that much as long as the beer is top freaking draw. Right, now I need to get the rest of this uh, moved, all this timber stock down here. I'm going to use a lot of this to make some more picture frames with, like I mentioned on yesterday's vlog. And uh, then also, I'd like Stuart to get back quick as possible and pick up a load of this bad boy, that's right. C24 construction timber, it's basically three by two. And uh, I need this to build the framework. I could get started now, but I'm afraid he's uh, predisposed. Empty in the van, I put the tip. But as soon as he's back, I'm gonna send him for, well, loads of this stuff. Literally loads of it. And then we've got four frames to make and the whole, whole mezzanine to build. Quite a job. So that guy who walked in, uh, Dave Anderson, he runs the Bees Knees. They won Pub of the Season last season. So, uh, brew day's finished. Sambo's brought me um, Valentine's gift from his, uh, well, from close to his previous employer, the Welbeck Abbey Brewery. This is their Henry Etar, which ain't a bad beer actually, provided. It's not been kept in the warmth. They said he had it in his car for a bit, so... God, I really should have a bottle open, shouldn't I, really? Fucking pliers. Come on, lad. I've got one. Oh, hey, up. Oh. We're in. <laughs> so, 4% honeysuckle aroma, golden ale. So, what we've done is finished off the brew, got that in the fermenter. I've got caustic in there now. I've turned the pump off while we talk to the camera. And uh, Stu has brought in a load of timber and we've started the carcassing for the cold room. We've already got one leg of it up. So it will not be long before we've got the rest of it up, I don't think. So we'll stop in a little bit later tonight to get the job done as we're away at the Champion Beer of Nottingham tomorrow. Oh yeah, oh, that's all right. Yeah, so it's beer. It's beer and uh, bag of chips time. Uh, 
guess where I am. I'm only on the mezzanine. It turns out it's high enough after all. Look at that. Hey, I'm not even going to bang my Swede on anything. The flooring is not yet suitable for walking on properly. If I show you this, we've got a little bit of sideways motion us, but nothing that can't be fixed with uh, a couple of triangular gallows brackets. Yeah, nothing that can't be fixed with a few gallows brackets and plenty of screws, some triangular pieces in there to prevent sideways movemento. But yeah, it's a good vantage point. We'll get some good angles for brew days up here as well, I think. I am really quite chuffed with that. Oh, it feels pretty steady, mate. Just got that little bit of a wobble, but like I say, we'll be able to take that out, no problem. Um, what, well, that not so like they're moist? Because they're bleeding. It looks like they're sweating. Yeah, they're not so bleeding, so it's resin, it's uh, amber, if you like. You know what the trap uh, mosquitoes in? Yeah, yeah little alley on They're not in it, they're dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Yeah, man. Anyway, it's approaching 8 o'clock. I've kept Stuart so busy, he's missed about four dates with four different women. So, uh, yeah, it's eight o'clock. So I'd better let him take me home instead, eh? Lucky fella. And we'll catch you tomorrow for the CBON. Wish me luck. <laughs>